everyone. Welcome back to the 100 days of the 2023 National Electrical Code. We're still in Article 445. In the previous video, we covered about the electrical disconnect for the conductors leaving the generator. 445.19 talks about the emergency shutdown of the prime mover. Sometimes it's not enough to just shut off the wires leaving the generator. Sometimes you need to shut off the actual engine of the generator itself. And that's where 445.19 comes in. Boy, I'll tell you. If you have a 2017 or 2020 code book and you look at the rules for disconnect and emergency shutdown, oh man, I, I, I hate to say it, but they were they were kind of convoluted. And sometimes the best thing we can do is when we have a rule, when we have a code section that has two different rules, boy, if, whenever possible, put it into two different subsections and it just makes things easier. And that's what we have here. So 445.18 for the disconnect for the conductors leaving the generator, 445.19 for shutting off the engine of the generator itself. Let's see what it says here in 445.19. All right, so signage requirements for the generator's emergency shutdown device were added. I gotta be honest, I really, really like this change. I think this is something that was definitely needed and now we've got clear language. So 445.19a, Generators must have a way to shut off the prime mover, which is the engine, the internal combustion engine, all right? So you got to have a way to shut off the generator itself, not just the wires leaving it. It has to disable all starting circuits, thereby rendering the prime mover incapable of starting, and it must require a manual way of restarting the prime mover. All right, so we need to be able to shut the engine off and make sure it doesn't just come back on automatically. Not something that we need to do very often, and that's why we call it an emergency shutdown. I mean, the only, the only time we really have to do this is, let's face it, if the if the room that the generator is in is on fire, <laughs> we need to shut the engine off. So that's our emergency disconnect. We don't want the firefighters throwing water onto a generator that's on. Remember, the disconnect in 445.18 just shuts off the wires downstream of the disconnect. Well, what about the wires and the electricity that's part of the generator? You know, it's one thing to shut off the load, the disconnect, but it's something else to throw water on energized equipment. So 445.19a says you gotta be able to shut off the prime mover, the actual engine. Remote shutdown, 445.19b. For other than one and two family dwellings, so, you know, commercial, generators rated more than 15 kW, must have a shutdown device that's outside of the equipment room or generator enclosure and is readily accessible and complies with A1 and A2. All right, so really not a change here, just kind of a clarification because we did kind of break it up into, into different subsections. Here is my generator shutdown, my emergency stop. It doesn't tell me exactly where this has to be remote, so I mean, could it be 100 feet away from the generator enclosure? 1,000 feet away from the generator enclosure? Mm, probably it would be better to put it right outside the door. You know, I mean, that, that's where I would expect to find it if I'm a firefighter is right by the door to the building. So maybe that's a better place and maybe in the 2026 we'll clarify where it needs to be. But for right now, it just has to be outside of the equipment room and it has to be readily accessible. So I walk up to it, hit the stop button, and we know it's down. The emergency stop can be located on the generator enclosure, and it must be marked generator emergency shutdown with a label that complies with the regular old, you know, signage requirements. So I'm showing one that's on the generator, but of course here we're still talking about the remote shutdown. So I put the remote shutdown outside the enclosure, push the button, it's got a label on it that says generator emergency shutdown. If we go back one slide, eh, emergency generator stop. Look, if I'm the inspector, I'm going to say that's close enough. I'm sure that the manufacturer of this is probably going to change the language on that stop button now that the code specifically tells you what to say, but I think that certainly tells the story. 445.19c, emergency shutdown for one and two family dwellings. An emergency shutdown device that complies with the rules we just read, 445.19, A1 and A2, must be located outside at a readily accessible location unless the generator is cord and plug connected. Yeah, I mean, if it's cord and plug, you, you unplug it. It can be installed on the generator enclosure 
and it must be marked generator emergency shutdown with a label that complies with the regular label rules. All right, so you might remember, if we go back to section 230.85 for residential, it says, listen, you gotta have an emergency disconnect for the service, right? So the firefighters can shut down the house. So you gotta be able to shut off the service from outside. Think about being a firefighter for a minute. You're, you have to respond to a fire, right? The house is on fire. I go shut off the electrical to the building, to the house. I'm thinking, oh man, thank God it's a new house. It's got that emergency outside disconnect that we've wanted for so long. And we go hit the outside disconnect and then you hear a generator fire up and you don't know how to shut the generator off. There's a rule that says, look, you have to have signage at the service disconnect that tells you where the generator is but what if you can't figure out how to shut it off? You walk over to the generator and it's like, okay, where's the button? Where's the stop button? Now it says, look, it actually has to have a label that says generator emergency shutdown. Um, <laughs> I know of an application a couple years ago, a friend of mine, electrical contractor, uh, they spent, you know, however much money they, they charged the customer, you know, put in a big, nice generator, transfer switch, the whole bottle of wax for the house. And then they get a call back like a month later. And this customer, this homeowner is irate. They call my buddy and they're like, hey, you charged us 15 grand for this stupid generator and transfer thing and everything else and it doesn't even work. The power went out and nothing happened. We're all dark. We had to figure out how to shut off. We couldn't, even, we couldn't even turn it on. We don't know how to turn the generator on. And my buddy's like, oh my God, he's embarrassed and humiliated. And he's like, man, we tested it. We went through all this. I know it works. So they go, out, they go out to the site to figure out what happened. And look at the picture here. <laughs> You've got this tiny little shutdown device, right? Right there. What if it didn't have a label on it? Well, I'll tell you what. In that, in that instance, it didn't. There was no label. There was just this tiny little switch. And it, wasn't, it didn't even have the, the, the line and circle on it. It was just a little tiny rocker switch. And at some point, somebody had probably bumped it, you know, pulling weeds and, and smacked it with their butt or something. And they accidentally shut off the generator and didn't even know. And then when they needed the generator to turn back on, it didn't. <laughs> so you need to know how to shut off the generator if you're a first responder. And, you know, it'd kind of be nice to know how to turn it on as well if you're a homeowner. So there you go, 445.19c is going to do both for us because now we have to clearly mark where this emergency shutdown device is. So nice work in 445.18 and 19, two different issues, two different requirements, and now two different sections. So I think they did a really, really nice job in article 445. All right, we've got one more video here in chapter four. The next one's going to be on Article 480, which is Stationary Standby Battery Systems. I hope to see you then.